This is Florida Natural Farming at Frog Valley Tropical Fruit Farm. <clears throat> I'm gonna taste the koi muk fruit today. It's a Articarpus hypergyrus or Articarpus parvus. I don't know. They call it the koi muk. It's also known as the sweet Articarpus. <clears throat> it's sweet. It's a sweet fruit. It's delicious. It's my favorite fruit. And I was trying to do some research on it and found that it's full of anthocyanins, uh, which are compounds that work with phenolic compounds, synergistic effects to increase the effects of the phenolic compounds. And koi muk fruit has all six of the main anthocyanins. Um, so anthocyanins uh, prevent neurological disease. Not aid in the prevention, prevent. And are bioactive in humans and uh, only 1% are detected in blood and urine after consuming them. Why is that be? So, they're good for you. And, uh, <laughs> I need some, uh, they're cool little fruits, aren't they? I mean, look at them. Seeds sell for $5 each. Eat the whole thing. You gotta pick them, they're super soft. When they're ripe, they just change this color. And you can ripen them on the counter like jackfruit. And um, the anthocyanins that are in them are beneficial for your brain health. <clears throat> Prevent brain disease. Sounds like everyone needs some of these. <clears throat> so you eat it flesh and all. I mean, skin and all, flesh and all. Yeah. Flesh and skin. And It's the most intense delicious flavor that you just want to suck out every bit of it with your tongue and not waste it by chewing. It's so that good. For some reason I've been eating these, <laughs> only I've been eating these. I shared one with my partner. Um, mm. They're like, these are my, have been my be favorite fruit two years in a row. Um, and I crave them when I don't have them ripe. I've got one big seed, that's good. But look at how, I mean, look at that color. That's what anthocyanins are. They're pigments. It's what's in like pomegranates. And um, we have two different uh, types of koi muk trees. The, some have a reddish flesh like this. And then some have an orange flesh. And we have both types that fruit. But this year our, our, our orange flesh type did not fruit. Mm. It's like hands down the best fruit I've ever tasted. It's just the, it's the flavor is so complex. Uh, very acid and um,
it kind of gives me chills when I eat it. Obviously, I need the... Got two seeds. And a little raccoon. She like following me around. All these animals help de me deal with all the fruit that I have uh, that is hard to deal with. And they help me deal with actually returning like 50% of the fruit back to the earth. So it works. They don't always get 50% of the fruit. Some of the fruit they don't even got, go after, which is the Kwaimuk tree and um, knock on wood. And uh, I think it's because the fruit's so hard to see. I can see it. I've gotten good, good at seeing it. It's my favorite, favorite tree. This is a grafted tree from Excalibur that's been flowering for, is that the fruit? Yeah, right there. See how hard it is to see? I see it's right in the center. Um, I'm gonna go up there. Uh, grafted tree from Excalibur that's been in the ground for us six years and it was a tiny little graft you know like a 10 inch tall tree and I just put it here didn't water it just walked away I had four of them they were sickly like tiny little grafts and they're you know they're from a nursery so they had to go totally organic <sighs> this one survived all the rest died and this one's been flowering for four years and fruiting for two now. Um, and the fruits are simply sublime. I see this one's ripe. See that? This is that one that has, there's two fruits there. There's a green one that you can't see right here. And then there's this one that just turned. So I don't know if it's a fruit day for the biodynamic people or not, but probably is, I would guess. I need to check that. But, um, give me my fruit, please. You can have that one. Oh, there it is. Perfectly ripened. Perfectly ripened by my fruit, full of anti. Antocyanins. What is it? I can't even remember the name now. I got so excited looking for the, at this fruit. Um, anthocyanins, that's it. Um, I love the fruit. Uh, this, this tree had about 30 tr fruit on it this year. Last year it produced two. It was the first time it, or no, five. Five little fruit. Everyone wanted the seeds, but um, I really, I've kind of, all the seeds are like promised to people. It's like sending most of them to hard hit eating areas. And then, well, and then I'm gonna take the, the second most, and then I have a person in LA I have to ship to. So they're kind of probably all spoken for. I got two seeds out of that, one Kwaimak. And... Look at the wood ducks. Um, love wood ducks. Anyway, yeah. I wish I could uh, provide everyone, but the trees just started producing, so they they do amp up. I think 2,000 fruit is what I read. Um,
way over to this jackfruit, and then I'm gonna go look at the other koi muck tree. It's so freaking cold today. Uh, I hate cold weather. I think I hate cold weather more than anyone I know. I'm in like 62 degrees this morning. Well, it's cold for here. Winter is here. I'm gonna eat that jackfruit. I was hoping it would be ready before I sent the seeds. Um, out on Monday to Naples and <clears throat> Venice and stuff. I have to put in my vegetable garden. Look at I it's, it's all like cleared now. It's like the weeds are growing over it. I guess that's the time to do it. <clears throat> I put my hay down. I don't know. I don't really get into growing vegetables for some reason. I don't I I I've done it. I I like doing it when I'm doing it, but then I Sometimes I just don't bother doing it, but I try to do a little bit every year. Just because I have to. <clears throat> Annual vegetables. This pomelo tree looks good. It's sort of biodynamic certified rare tropical fruit farm. And um, we grow everything regeneratively and naturally we don't water anything we use biodynamic compost to make on site and i apply animal bedding with manure and pee in it from our desi cows our miniature zebu aka and um everything seems to thrive don't have to worry about drought. We had the worst drought ever this summer. The, our pond actually dried up and my partner now agrees with me that he doesn't have to worry about the trees anymore during drought in the winter because we just went through the worst one and one tree out of thousands died. And that's okay. Was it a nursery grown tree? Um, this is a koi muck seedling. This, you know, uh, it's looking good. They say it's cold, uh, can grow in cold climates, but I know my friends, Koimuk, freeze back near here. So, I don't know why that is. Maybe compaction, I don't know. This is our other Koimuk tree. This is a seed growing tree. I've had this tree longer than any other tree on this farm. Maybe that's why it's my favorite fruit. Um, this tree produced one fruit last year. This is the one that has the orange flesh, the koi muck. This, this tree came from Montoso Gardens when they sold trees, little tiny trees, like this big, uh, in Puerto Rico. I love them. I've been buying from them for years. Um, I don't have to buy anything from them anymore because <laughs> we kind of produce it all here now, so that's good. Um, you know, look at my, uh, look at my, <sighs> Philodendron Maximus. That's that same fungus that grows in our, uh, mangoes when they got frozen. <laughs> Not beetles, but fungus. One guy. It's like the deep dark woods today. Brr. The biodynamic people ask me what all this, you know, the chicken wire 
stuff was. Uh, what's this? Trying to glue those orchids onto the trees. <laughs> Sorry, it's not attractive. Um, so I, I never explained to them that this cacao tree, um, all this damage was from the hurricane because the leaves were young. And the leaves, when they're young, are very soft and they get real big, but they're still like pink colored. The hurricane came and um, that's why they look so haggard. It's almost like they look in the winter. But this, tr this tree fruited last year for the first time. It's a seed grown tree from a tree that I planted in Florida outside, um, dry farm tree. But it hasn't, I thought I saw flowers after the, after the drought, but I haven't seen any flowers since the drought. Um, I don't think. Maybe I have. I must have. Anyway, it'll fruit again this year, probably. I mean, next year I'll get fruit. It's a cacao seedling. There's a cacao from that fruit, that tree that I just showed you. This is the kick, or the, you know, the bigger tree. It's the seedling from that tree right next to the, our, you know, our animal bedding, the pine shavings, the manure, the little bit of grass, dried grass hay in there. This is a kolok tree. What's that? Mm -hmm. I have a path here somewhere. The animals take it. So this is that ditch that goes into the pond, but that's probably how high the water level is on the pond, I would guess. So they put that in there, and if that wasn't there, there wouldn't be any standing water here. But that's just the pond is overflowed to that because these ditches fill up. Used to harvest water for a pond, that pond back there where the wood ducks were, so that's all that is. Um, this is the Philodendron Maximus. Some creature kept trying to dig in here. Uh, this was a very expensive plant, but it uh, was like three inches of Osmocote. And I had to like, looks healthy, it looks good. Look at the new roots on it. This looks like it's a new, new growth coming out. Um, that leaf looks good. Uh, it's healthier than it's looked. So I had to like remove all the soil, which is what I do with all those aeroids that have soil, and throw it right away, and then wash the roots and then put it in biodynamic compost. And then it was looking good. So it was so big that I planted it outside during the drought and most of the, the uh, or d during the summer and then it was drought. Most of the aeroids that I planted during summer <sighs> died during the drought. But all the aeroids I planted during drought in winter from cuttings have survived. So I start doing cuttings in after the winter equinox <clears throat> for all my aeroids that I have in the shade house or in, you know, on the porch. This is part of that ditch system. Just not as low, it's not as close to the pond. <clears throat> That's kind of a deep spot over there. This dug out. They did that. In the 60s, because this was a, a, a flower farm for a short while, I guess. And so they were trying to control the water, which can't really do. 
if you make the if you make the water table below or if you dig the ditch below the water table then you get standing water that's that's what this ditch is that's the same ditch it's down there underneath that big guanacaste tree that's a state tree of costa rica it's a giant pea so you can eat the seeds inside the shells and um, it provides shade and refuge to other animals. It's a, it's, they're beautiful trees. Everyone like falls in love with that tree. Anyway, this is Florida Natural Farming and I hope you have a beautiful day.